everyone and welcome to this week's edition of my Become Unstoppable series. So those who don't know me, I'm Julie Fitzpatrick. I'm the founder of Medicide Therapy and Coaching and I predominantly help stressed out, burnt out business owners and in less than 30 days eradicate their stress and overwhelm so that they can become unstoppable. So let's see if we can get Nikki up. So Nikki. Hey, without any further ado, would you like to introduce yourself, my lovely, and just let everyone know who you are and what it is you do? Yeah, I'm Nikki, Nikki Kerr, and I'm a personal and professional development coach. And I close the gap between where people are now and where they want to be. I tend, I tend to work these days, I tend to work with entrepreneurs. Um, do you know what? Lonely leaders is a bit of a thing. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just mean... When you're in leadership, it's quite a lonely job. Mm. And, uh, whether whether you're you know you're head of your own business just starting, or whether you're actually the head of a team, and um, you haven't got anybody who's mm. at the same level around you, you know what I, you know what I mean. You've got nobody yeah. to sort of bounce things around with. Yeah. So sort yeah. of where I work. In. Yeah. Very much so for business owners as, as well, isn't it? Absolutely. So I, I I predominantly work with business owners, but I've also been a professional for thirty five years. So. I work with those too, but it's it's just getting your taglines though, isn't it? It's so frustrating because you just want to say I help lots of people, but we get told we can't do that, which is very frustrating. <laughs> but anyway, my lovely, thank you for arriving in the end. We got there. Um, before we crack on into your story and we find out what we want to talk about, do you want to tell me what does being unstoppable mean to you, my lovely? Yeah. Do you know what? I've been thinking about this because you say it to all your guests. <laughs> Um, do, do you know what comes to mind? Have you ever been to the fairground and you've played that game called whack-a-mole? Mm -hmm. That's what unstoppable means to me. You know, sometimes life throws logs at mm -hmm. you, doesn't it? You can't always mm -hmm. determine what life's going to throw at you, but you can determine how you're going to react and how you're going to respond to whatever it is. So that's that's really what unstoppable means to me. Oh, nice. I've got a nice little image in my head now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Because sometimes you, when you think you've kind of got life sussed. Yeah, you pop your head up when it knocks you down again. Yeah, yeah. And I think most people, um, anyone who's watching this now or on the replays, there's going to be times in everybody's lives where you thought you got it right, but you had it so wrong. Yeah. Um, whether it be, you know, something, sometimes it's in our control, sometimes it's not. Um, but life always throws us curveballs, and you're right, it's not about what curveball has been thrown at you, it's about how you deal with it, what do you learn from it, and what do you do on the back of it, mm -hmm. isn't it, really? And I think, you know, we, we all know exactly what this means after COVID, don't we? Who could mm -hmm. have expected that? So, massive example there. Yeah, so true, actually. And it's funny now, isn't it, because it seems almost like it never happened it was like almost seems like it was an eternity ago when it wasn't really but you know and it was horrific for so many people yet it also was brilliant in other ways as well because if it hadn't been for covid i probably wouldn't be sitting here now because i lost my job in covid and i probably wouldn't have gone on the journey that i've gone on i know my husband and changed careers as well during that time and there's lots of other people that did but as I say on the downside of that obviously I know many people who lost loved ones and everything else but it also changed the dynamic of how we worked so I was working in the corporate world at the time and it was always I was traveling up to London pretty much every day working from home was just about starting to be possible mm -hmm. and then bang it was like oh, and I think it changed the whole dynamics around therapy and coaching and things like that as well. Because years ago, I was a trained counsellor and it was, ne it was always face to face. It was never going to happen that you had a phone call about it or you did it over a video call. But obviously that changed as well, which is a good thing because now we can do our work anywhere in the world, can't we? And in fact, last week I was at a motorhome show. Um, I've got a put it on my vision board yet and I've got to get some money in abundance first right but the idea is we want to have a motor home and travel the world but I can still work I can yeah. still 
you know, as long as I've got an internet connection, I can still service my clients. I can still go out and do different things. I can still do these if I want to, because the world is your oyster, isn't it, with the technology? So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, good example, and it kind of good things and bad things kind of came out of that. Um, but yeah, really, really interesting. So, how did you end up being a coach then? What, what what's your how did yeah what's your story? How did you end up doing that? Well, I, I've I've had several careers. Um, I actually when when I left school, I I fell into hospitality. I fell into catering. I learned to be a chef. Um, I actually went along to be one, to be a receptionist, but I'd had tonsillitis and. I was late going for the interview and all the, all, all the courses were full up. So I ended up being a chef. Well, um, like I do. <laughs> as you do. Well, yeah. Uh, and then I think the main reason I went to be a chef was because you could live in. And, you know, at 16, when you can live in, it seemed, seemed great fun. Anyway, so I, sort of, I did that and I did it very well. And I had my own business by the time I was 24. I've actually cooked for the king. There you go. Woo! He was pretty Charles at the time, but anyway, that's one of these things. Oh, um, wow, I, I almost got the sack, but that's a different story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you carry on, you carry on. Um, and then I went to university and I did my degree in nutrition, and, and I was really, really happy doing nutrition. I used to work for the government. Um, but I was married at the time, and having children, you know, things, sort of family life took over, and I you know, I had, had the most wonderful experience of bringing my two up, who are now, um, well, one of them's actually bringing his own up now. But move forward many, many years, and um, after I got divorced, I had to go and get a job that paid some money, and I fell into youth training. I, I started to work with something called the Youth Awareness Program mm -hmm. in um, one of the local councils here. And uh, I really did it from a selfish point of view, because I love writing, and I thought, well, I'll be able to write some stories. Mm. But I started on their induction course, which was um, I had to learn how to be around people who had drug and alcohol issues. And this was a different world to me. I knew nothing about this, but I was qu I'm quite good at learning things. And um, I was learning a lot from the people in the room. But one of the things that I remember mostly from this induction course is, and I've, I've said it on many of my posts, the lady who was training us, she said, and she was an ex-heroin user, and I say ex, she said criticism is a gift. And if it hadn't been for somebody actually showing her the mirror of what was going on in her life, mm. it would never have changed. I love that. And so criticism is, is a gift. Yeah. And um, anyway, I went on to, I, I became the trainer, actually, um, of that particular place and and then I learned to be an assessor I took my I took my qualifications to become an assessor because I was teaching um, I then became qualified as an adult trainer so I got my what's it called now oh, I can't remember it's not actually a full degree uh, for teacher training but it of, of, as a teacher rather but it, I train in the adult learning area and then I became qualified as um, somebody who could do, um, gosh, what else was it? Oh, I used to, I used to do the, the quality assurance, that's right. <laughs> and then through all these things, I, I actually got headhunted and asked to, asked to go and run some programs in the prisons, because um, obviously by now I knew an awful lot about drug and alcohol taking and um, all this sort of stuff, and I trained all the, all the people in the prisons. And funnily enough, you know, you talk about, you know, just carry on. Uh, resilience and all this sort of stuff. I thought I was being interviewed and had taken a job for uh, training people in South London. And when I took the job, I probably hadn't learned to listen by that time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might. When I got the job, I realised I'd actually taken a job to train everybody in the south of England. Um, so I had 20 cohorts. And you talk about uh, distant learning and, and all this mm. sort of stuff natural now. You know, almost 20 years ago, I was doing distant learning. Uh, over the phone, you know, just sending emails, all that sort of stuff. So, it, so it became quite natural because I had people in all different prisons all over, all over the south of England. Anyway, I got them all through their cohort, fabulous success. But one of the things I took from that was how fabulous they were. These are my learners. How fabulous they were interviewing their clients who 
when they just came into prison, people who've got drug and alcohol issues mm. have to have um, an assessment. And they were phenomenal, these people, at turning their client's mindset around, getting them to understand there is possibly a reason why you might want to change. And I learned that that's called motivational interviewing. And so I thought, you know what? I've, I've got to get rid of this. <laughs> anyway, I, again, when I finished that cohort, I got um, I got headhunted, and I got because people in education like like to get people. Uh, sorry, businesses in education like to get people on who've got good CVs because it gives them the opportunity to run more qualifications. Um, so I got headhunted again, and I was doing some youth work for somebody, so running the qualification for them, and. Um, Anyway, it's a long story short, but um, I tried to <laughs> I tried to assert myself and ask them for some expenses for my travel, and I got sacked. Um, I, I just read a book on how to assert yourself. <laughs> Did you get your money back on your book? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have done. Yeah, that would be good. Anyway, so I got sacked, and I, this is me falling in and out of things just because things happen to me. Mm. But I thought. At that point, what am I going to do? And I was in a fortunate position because I'd just released some money from my house to make an investment. Um, I was thinking about, you know, an investment for the future. So there was no like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because I've got no money. I had this, I didn't do the investment in the end. I invested in myself. I'd taken, Good. yes. Good girl. I'd taken, a, that was the first time I'd ever really yeah. thought about what I do. Because when you're in the thick of it, you go with the flow, don't you? Yeah. You bounce and what I certainly did um, and I started to think what do I really want to do and it came to my mind that yeah I really really thought this this thing that I'd heard about in prison this this motivational interview was for me and um, you heard of the coaching academy most people mm -hmm. heard of the coaching academy well they run this uh, three-day introduction thing and I went on there to see if I wanted to be a coach didn't really know what coaching was no. uh, and while you're on there, they, they teach you a little bit, you know, like most good courses, they teach you this thing called GROW, the goal, the reality, the opportunity. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, John Whitfield's um, strategy for coaching. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought, Do you know what? This is, I'm quite pragmatic. And this is strategy. I can handle strategy. I'd already learned an awful lot about behaviour when I was working with drug and alcohol users. I'd learned um, a lot of therapy mm. stuff. But I knew therapy wasn't really for me. I'm... I can help people to get over blocks, but I'd rather, you know, you're, you're a therapist yeah. and I take that off to you. Mm. You need a lot more patience. <laughs> um, I am empathic, but I like to see people go forward and achieve um, quite quickly. Um, and um, everything I was learning from coaching was, was taking me in this direction. It's fabulous. And for all I thought I knew about human behavior, uh, one of the additional courses I took was DISC, Psychometric Profiling, and this was run through. Um, it was actually, there was a, a small module within our coaching, but you had the opportunity at vast expense again. <laughs> investment, just, darling, investment. Yeah, I'm throwing my money here there this time. But I knew, I knew this stuff was the answer. For all I knew about people mm. and change programs that you, 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 you know, you learn, um, cognitive behaviour therapy, all that sort of stuff. I think if I had understood people better and myself more mm -hmm. importantly, which is what I learned with DISC, um, I think my, my life would have been very different. Mm. I think I would have made decisions differently. I'd have made relationships differently. Um, mm -hmm. I'd have probably kept relationships because I'd have understood things and not taken yep. them off. <clears throat> yeah, exactly. That's so amazing. I, so you've done loads of stuff then. Yeah, afraid I was. I did become a bit of um, an educational junkie. So that, that's that brings you up to speed now, right? Is it? Well, that profiling. That was in two thousand and fifteen, and this is when I realised actually, I mean, coaching academy have already got discovered for, for all their clients, you know, coaching. And mm. I, thought, how am I going to apply this in my business? Um, and I, I studied global leadership for about two and a half years I was studying global leadership um, and I started to learn a great deal about leadership mm. uh, and um, what goes on um, in, inside corporates I, I'd been married in, into the corporate world for 20 years anyway so I was well aware what went on in the mm -hmm. corporate world yeah um, me too. <laughs> yeah, and uh, 
I realized that, you know, there was, there was a massive, the massive gap that I had in my own education was sales and marketing. Because mm. at the time I'd stayed in the same field, you know, in that sort of health and social care, um, you know, the, the non-profit area, people were just saying, oh, just get Nikki in, she'll sort it, she'll sort it. Mm. And I, I'm the person who could solve the problem because I mm. could always find something and solve the problem, take whatever tool it is out of my pack and just mm. do it. But I didn't know anything about sales and marketing and it was a bit icky to me. Mm. And I think, you know, in our profession, a lot of people feel like that, don't they? Yeah, and, and, and that's, that's a huge thing, isn't it? When you go from corporate world, um, not necessarily being told what to do per se, but you are, aren't you? Because it would be like, you know, like my last 10 years, I was a project manager and it, well, there you go, Julie, there's your project, whether you liked it or not, or it's interested you or not, or, you know. You do it. Or normally it was like his multiple projects, actually. He never had one. But anyway, um, but when you become a business owner, it's a whole new world because suddenly, you know, like you were saying earlier about having that accountability and having that someone around you to bounce things off. You don't always have that, do you? And it, it can be a really, really lonely environment, which is why um, it's about investing in yourself, in your personal and business development. Because we actually met in Adam Stott's Gold Circle, big business events, where there's a whole community of like-minded people like us, right? It's full of business owners, all with different businesses, but you've all got the same intent, haven't you? You all want to make money, um, and you all want to, we all help each other, don't we? If, if someone says, right, I, I, I want to put a new video out, what do you think? People will put it in the group, and it's about just having people there to help you. In the same way, I've got my Rise Therapy Training Group, which is a lovely Siobhan that's on the here, there's another massive community because in that group we're all therapists going through our own work so that we can be the best versions of ourselves but at the same time all the tools and techniques that we're learning we can put and use on our clients yeah. and it's about being in those environments and learning and sucking in all that knowledge which I never used to do it didn't really interest me before it's only like since I've been doing this that I've, I've been so excited about getting up every day and learning new things and sucking up, sucking up, sucking up, isn't it? And just doing something different. What you just said there, that hits the nail on the head. You <clears> said getting <throat> up every day, being excited. Mm. You have purpose, haven't you? Yeah. So, which actually brings me quite neatly into the next part. You think we'd rehearse this, wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then we would have, if we'd rehearsed it, we'd have actually remembered it. <laughs> <Duh>. <laughs> By 2019, I realised, in 2019, I was the executive coach for the United Nations. And, Woo! I know. Just drops I, these things in. <laughs> oh, when I, I cooked for the king. And, um... <laughs> you, know, you know, it's about being in the right place at the right time. It really is sometimes. Oh, brilliant. I love but, it. Anyway, <sighs> mine from the coaching academy, actually, somebody I did the disc stuff with. She'd already got this association. It was it, anyway. It's a long story. She'd already got this association. She coached at a junior level. I coached at an executive. Probably a lot to do with age. Um, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um, but um, anyway, so I was coaching for them. Not not full time. It was an associate role. It was um, you know I was on their platform. They needed. They specifically needed somebody to um, who could deliver a three sixty feedback. Now, if if you talk to people who've had their 360 feedback um oh you're talking impact. about appraisals are you yes Personally, yeah, when yeah. It, when it comes oh, to oh i love them management, when it comes to senior management and leadership mm. there are there are specific things you have to watch out for because a lot a lot of people at that level aren't used to having feedback mm. <laughs> um mm. anyway so i i've got quite a sense of humor quite a dry sense of humor and i can normally gauge where people are at and how to how to talk to them so yeah I, I really enjoyed this however and it was paying very nicely actually considering that I wasn't have to go out and you know trawl all the network events and try and find some something to do it just it was just delivered to me which was absolute godsend I was also solving somebody else's um educational business problems at the same time mm. and I was absolutely burnt out you know you talked about project management and project management there's a scope isn't mm. there you scope 
right at the beginning. Well, when you're talking about solving problems, that scope never covers everything, does it? No. You know, real issues are right below, below no. the surface, and that's what was going on. So I was working 24-7 because when I get my teeth into things, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not likely to let go until I've solved it. Um, I was so burnt out and realised that actually it's not going to be that many years before I'm going to be trying to draw some sort of pension. Mm. And mm. I didn't have much in the bank there for as far as pension went. So I had to do something. So the, first of all, I tried to put my house on the market um, to, well, I did put my house on the market with the intention of spending loads more money on sale, on a sales and marketing team. And uh, anyway, that I didn't sell the house at first. And somebody came, came to me and said, um, town and country or whoever it one of these people came to me and said look you can have to drop the house 50k I went, no i'll take it off the market um and i took it off the market and i refurbished it and i put it back on and i did sell it but throughout this time i realized that, that actually i could have i could do with a break from solving everybody else's mm. problems i really really mm. start thinking about myself and i went on a property course and um again vast amounts of money but you know my mind was set have you ever read the book rich man uh rich rich dad poor dad no but obviously adam talks about it a lot doesn't he yeah yeah it's possibly one of the big uh one of the most important books i've read mm. most recently and um i still dip in and out of it if you want to change your mindset about finances and where to invest your money aka you um that's what that's what you need to be doing um reading that book anyway so i went on this course um learned about professional uh development when it comes to uh, property I, I dabbled around in property uh refurbs all my life i've always always been the type of person bought the worst house in the street did it up domestically and sold it and made quite you know substantial amounts of money um but i'd never done it professionally and by the end of 2019 I'd sold my property, put some equity in the bank, and I thought, do you know what? I'm going to go up north. That's going to be my strategy, do the rental bit. Strategy number two, I'll go away and find some serviced accommodation abroad, do that. And for the flip, so that's that's what you do when you, you're trying to make money for capital. I'll, I'll buy in uh, Weybridge. Weybridge is a very affluent area quite near me. Um, oh, sorry. Wait. Yeah. It's Surrey Way. It's lovely there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's beautiful. Very expensive as well, which um, anyway, so I moved over there and I just rented for a while while I was trying to get everything together. Going up and down north with only the dog for company, um, five hours each day to see a property for, you know, 20 minutes. It was boring and um, I wasn't getting very far. And then, of course, COVID hit, didn't it? But actually, when COVID hit, I was in, now I'm dropping this again, but this really is where I was. I was in Antigua looking at service to accommodation because i'd seen it on right move and i thought you know what I like <laughs> you're hilarious <laughs> i thought i like the caribbean i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in this property see what it's like and see if i want to buy it um anyway so i went over there and realized very quickly why all the properties were dilapidated and also i realized my own limitations and i think you know in this world you've got to okay as much as i'm a i can do anything person the reality is you have to realise your limitations when you need to have more of a team around you. Mm. And I didn't have the team to take that forward. Um, but actually, whilst I was over there, COVID closed down the UK. I managed to get the last flight back, and I'm not sure that was perhaps in my favour. No. Wouldn't it be? Oh, no, I oh, I've just got to stay now. I can't get home. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I did get home, um, and. Whilst I was on my, my doggy walks over the next few months, I found a property locally that was um, by auction. And you talk about being unstoppable. Um, and I think this is just sometimes you've got no choice, so you've just got to carry on. Mm. And I made an accidental purchase via auction. Accidental, uh, huh? Accidental. Yeah. This, I said, what did you buy, Nikki? What did you buy? <laughs> I bought a house. <laughs> oh. But, no, I, I, I'd been looking for something to buy, and I'd learned, as I said, learned strategies, and I knew this particular property. If I got the figures right, um, I knew I knew it would it would be a good investment. 
so um, I, I called up the auction house and I asked them for a viewing and they didn't get back to me because um, lots of people weren't doing anything really in, in auction mm -hmm. house sorry, in, um, in COVID. So I got in touch with the land registry. I looked up who owned this place, got on mm -hmm. I put the letter through their door and got myself in. And, um, so I had a viewing of the property. You were right there. Yeah, so I, I've got my PCs pinging. Oh, okay. okay. <clears throat> so I did get a viewing viewing um and i spoke to the chap who owned it and i realized i didn't actually i well, i knew i didn't have the whole money for it I had about 50 percent and so i said I, I wouldn't be going to auction because in auction terms you have to find the rest of the money in you know like uh, four weeks and after the auction the guy who i'd initially tried to contact from this auction had called me and asked me was i interested and uh, i said yes but I told him the actual uh, situation. I said, yeah, I am interested. And I know how much the guy wants. This is how much I would pay. But I haven't got the money together for the other 50%. And, um, that afternoon, I thought we were having a casual conversation. That afternoon, I got an email saying, the hammer's dropped. The house is yours. Could you please pay 10%? And you now have four weeks to complete the purchase. And um, now this is where I was... <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do myself. And I'm laughing now, but it, well, I wasn't laughing at the time. I was like, oh, I've done something silly here. How on earth am I going to get out of this? I, I, was t I was told there was a contract in place. So I just went with it. I, fortunately, I had the, t had the money in the bank for 10% because I had my equity, but I didn't have the refurb cost and various other bits. So I just Googled bridging loans. Never had a bridging loan in my life, but I'd heard about them on this course. And up came this place, top of Google, and I just phoned them up. And I managed to persuade them that I had enough knowledge about um, property refurbs, etc. Mm. to give me the money. At this time, I had no job. <laughs> I, I did have some money in the bank, but I wasn't a house owner because, um, obviously, I'd, I'd liquidated my assets. And, um, yeah, they said as long as you move in, they'd lend, lend me the money. And, and oh. I moved in and I built the house around me. Um, it wasn't easy because in COVID, it was, it was very I was in a new place for a start anyway, so I didn't have any team, didn't have any contacts. It wasn't it wasn't easy at all. Um, and, um, yeah, during COVID, it was difficult to find people. But anyway, long story again, I came out quite profitably, but with the clear realisation that this wasn't something I wanted to do again. And I actually... So, so, Nick, yeah, so, Nikki, just to interject there, so what would be your biggest messages from all of these different things that you've done then? What What made you keep digging deep and going for something different? I don't know whether it was something different. I think for me, it was solving the problem. Mm. Um, and sometimes you can't see beyond what the initial, what the initial way to solve a problem is. You can't, you know, you don't know the whole story. Certainly if you're walking into something new, you mm. don't know the whole story. I mean, I'd listened in, in the in the training, I'd listened to everybody who, mainly people were in in partnerships. And I mm. think life is very different. I'm, I'm, I'm single. I've been for a long time. I have my daughter living with me. And she's probably thinking, oh, for God's sake, shut up, mother, I'm trying to sleep, because she works nights. Um, but uh, I think, you know, other people I've come across, you know, the one person will, will have this skill and another person will have that skill, and they come together in a partnership. Mm. And it's one of the biggest things I learned. When you're going into something, understand your skills, understand the gaps, mm. and collaborate with people who can fill those gaps. Mm. You know, I said, yeah, you don't have to do everything on your own, do you? That's that's the key. Yeah, and I, I think, I think sometimes um, you're brought up to think that independence is the way to go, but it's not. If you ever read Steve Covey, and um, you know, Seven Habits of uh, Highly Effective People. He talks about independence being one level, but interdependence, you know, that's like the mm. big theme. Mm. That, that's where people really need to be. Mm. And I think that, that is my main, main, uh, main message out there is don't try to do things upon yourselves. Mm. You know, just taking things upon yourselves because when you, when you do, do, you're probably going to be doing things adequately, but would you really pay somebody to do the things at that level that you're doing? Yeah, and this is some of the stuff we learn in our in our business training, isn't it? That 
but there's so many things that we need to get done but if you can get someone else to do it cheaper because time is money and i and i i'm very lucky now because i've got a virtual assistant in the philippines called ricky he is amazing i don't know how i coped without him really i mm. could do with a lot more of them to be honest but manifesting my money and everything but it's made such a difference because you just get caught up in doing smaller tasks that do need to get done but you're not focusing on the bigger picture That's and this is like how i like, like to work with my clients as well as you mentioned earlier that yeah i am absolutely a therapist and that is my my main thing that i absolutely love but what i do is very fast because i can get them to the root of their problem really quickly and release them from it and then I integrate my coaching in with it as well. So I'm teaching them how to breathe properly, how to, how to release themselves from their stress and overwhelm and to put themselves first, which in it, in it, as we've been sort of saying, it's all about investing in yourself, right? So yes, I've invested as in business coaches to help me get my business up and running, but I've also constantly invested in my self development mm -hmm. and being in that community i'm learning all the time but that just makes me even better at what i do and i've always said i don't just want to be a therapist and coach i want to be a phenomenal therapist and coach and i'm already an award-winning therapist and coach which sets me aside to a lot of other people as well and that's what you do it's about putting yourself out there it's about the visibility and that's kind of why I started doing this Instagram live thing as well. I was telling you earlier, but I don't even know how it started. But it's about giving other people the opportunity to come on and share their story, but also giving me the opportunity to share what I do and to be people to kind of hopefully like me and go, do you know what, I want to go and work with her. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about being the best version of the person we can. And I'm still growing. I don't sit there in my car. I, I, you know what we're like as coaches. We're very good at this is what you need to do. Go and do that. This will really help you. But then when you reflect it back on yourself, you're like, hmm, am I doing all of that? And there's been cases and times when I haven't. Have you found that, that you're too busy telling everybody else what to do, but actually not doing it yourself sometimes? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I have to give myself a kick up the backside sometimes. You know, I tell people to go out and enjoy themselves and relax at the weekend. And you know what? I could really, I, I had something planned for Saturday night. I love live music. Absolutely love it. And um, I, had, I had something planned, but I could really have very easily just sat and watched Morse. <laughs> it, was, it was a bit chilly out. I was co quite comfy. Um, but I didn't. I, I, I think sometimes you've got to change your state, haven't you? Yeah. You'll know more about this. Yeah. But you've got, yeah. got to change your state. And I thought, you know what? <clears throat> step out the door. That's the first thing. And, and I just planned my journey and I just got out there and I had the most fabulous evening. Absolute mm -hmm. fabulous. And um, just talking to people and, and being mm -hmm. an environment which lifted my soul. And this you know, is, I, I, is it, yeah. And, and connection is so important. And this is why so many people suffer from depression. Is because the main thing we need to survive is communication. It's about being around people. It's interaction, isn't it? And if we keep ourselves really isolated all the time, we become more of a recluse, and then we just feel worse. We just feel more depressed. Yeah. Um, connection is the key, isn't it, to all of that. Um, we're running out of time a little bit now, Nikki. So, do you want to just give a little run up, run down, run up, run down, update on what it is you're actually offering your clients at the moment? So, if anyone's interested in working with you, what what might they expect, or what could they expect to achieve? Okay, what what I've realised over the over the years is if you're actually in a corporate environment where you get offered, you, you know, a lot of the time you'll get offered help, and this doesn't necessarily happen when you're an individual business owner and I'm looking at assessing business owners where situation where they are now it might just be helping them get off the step to get mm -hmm. in a business you know to, to trans translate their their corporate um, knowledge into their own business it could be just getting off that step mm -hmm. I've done that very very successfully for somebody and took three sessions um, it could be that you have a bigger plan and you want to do something like a three-month program where we'll we'll have 
lots of lots of stages and strategies to get you from where you are now over the hurdles and where you want to be but the very first thing is to contact me because it might even be that i'm not the person mm. to help you you know i had a lady uh, a few weeks ago and she wanted something that took deeper therapy and i explained this that you know sort of thing i mean it's a shame i should have had your number oh, no. this is the sort of people you should be yeah. sending to me Absolutely. well now we know each other a bit better and <laughs> got to find out what your colleagues and and your network actually do um mm. yeah it's 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 have a chat let's see if you've mm. got a challenge more than likely i'll either be able to help you personally or send you to somebody else who can help you yeah and i like that I, and that and that is a thing because i work predominantly with business owners but professionals and i've got a whole wide group of people really but that and that's the difference i think i i do elements of coaching but i would say your coaching would be very different to my coaching because i'm really coaching my clients on really understanding what's lying beneath and a lot of coaches can't do that because they don't have that skill set do they it's a it's interesting actually because I have a counselling background and now I'm what I would call a deep rooted therapist but I do like the coaching element a part of it and I think that's where I'm, I'm, I'm probably different to a lot of people because I can do that deep rooted therapy and I can do the in going forward part of what once we fix everything where do you want to be going forward yeah. and a lot of what I do around is around the power of the imagination anyway so it's really about your visualization like what what is it you want to do let's really dig deep but sometimes you can't unless you're if you're kind of below the line and you can't even think about where you want to be you need to clear and get above that line before you can even get to that I think um <clears throat> yeah I think I think no that, that that again is a great point because a lot of the time people aren't thinking at the right level no and, but I have the ability, I can, I can read people, and this comes from years and years and years of working with people who have been living on the edge of society and actually don't want to talk about what it is that's the problem. Mm. You know, you learn to read that there's a problem, and you learn to dig in the right direction and, and help them to actually be comfortable talking about it. Um, if, if at that point, you know, I realise there's a lot of things, you know, it's a big gap between mm. where we are and and where they need to be to start going forward. That's when I would, I'd say, hey, you know, perhaps you ought to go to so and so first. Mm. Come to me. But it's it's the ability to help people to be comfortable to to be. I don't know. My, my son calls me a chameleon because <laughs> I and I think again this comes from working with young people. You have to mirror who they are mm. to communicate with them. Mm. And um, that and along with, you know, the, the psychometrics that I've learned over the years and implemented over the years, I learn how to communicate with people, how they enjoy being communicated with and how they understand. So it's putting them at ease so as we can just have very, very normal conversations mm -hmm. and then helping them get the right strategy in place. Yeah. And what, and what I love, and I'm sure you'll probably agree with this, is the fact that when people do make that investment in themselves, right, it's, it's the transformation that you can get so fast, so quickly. And it's like, why didn't I do that a long time ago? And it's so fr frustrating, isn't it? And I, and I get a little bit like that myself. If, if only I knew what I knew now back then, I could, where would I be now? But a few things about that, I guess, is you can't go back in time. You can't change it. But it's about you still have to have gone through certain things in life to not to become the person you are anyway so you have to kind of embrace what's happened but anyone that's younger i would say like i love it when i work with my younger clients as well actually because i go do you know what you are so lucky because now you're not going to be living your life as an adult on beliefs and systems that you created when you were five right whereas we can get to 50 60 70 80 years in a, in of age still running our lives on beliefs we, we created when we was a child yeah. You know, why would you do that? Who does that? Who has a phone that's like older than five years? You end up throwing in the bin, don't you? You don't work on your laptop or desktop on software that was invented 20 years ago because it just doesn't work. Yeah, as just... humans, yeah. that's what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, somebody somebody once told me uh, one of the strategy classes I had with with our with our uh, circle, um, somebody who I've come to admire quite a lot now. 
just said, you're an auntie. That's who you are. You're an auntie. And I do, I feel sometimes like, do you remember the agony aunt used to have in the in the newspaper? Yeah, people well, Claire, Yeah, Claire Rayner. There was several of them, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. A few of them, yeah, yeah. Help people. Yeah, it is like that. And and I even when I before I was doing this as my job, um, I've always had. I've always in in the corporate world. I've always been the go-to person. You know, anyone who had problems, it was all they always congregate. It's like you almost like you're saying tattooed on your head, didn't it? <laughs> um, but that, but it's about. It's not. It's not that really. It's about the aura that you give off, isn't it? You give off that aura of knowing that people can come to you, rather, whereas other people are, are going, go away, don't come talk to me about your problems. No. Uh, <laughs> I can talk to you logically, but I can't talk to you emotionally. You know, so everyone's different. Um, horses for courses, isn't it? But I think when you're in that, you end up being a coach or a therapist or something like that, you've, you've obviously got that kind of aura around you that people are just attracted to you and want to come and talk to you, which is pretty important if that's the kind of work you want to do, right? But, um, yeah, I just think you do. You're just that sort of person, aren't you, when you're doing that career? So if anybody wants to, yeah, if anybody wants to contact me, um, Instagram, obviously, is, is a place you can, you, I don't use that very much. LinkedIn is my main, uh, my main route of contact. Or obviously you can uh, come to my website, which is um, www.greatfutures.net. Uh, um, but start with a conversation. And I think that's probably mm. what... Yeah, absolutely. And I totally agree with that. And that's exactly how people can do that with me as well. I mean, I have in Instagram, you can click in my bio and book um, a call on my um, calendar link there you probably got a calendar link on yours too haven't you just book in the call um, but this video will be released later today in Instagram and then in a few days time this will be up on my YouTube channel called Millerside Therapy and Coaching where you can see all my Become Unstoppable interviews you can see all my longer interviews um, with my clients and short client testimonial videos and some other video information on there as well so thank you Nikki for coming on I've really enjoyed it um, I a thing you said earlier about I love having guests on from our goal circle because when we're in train we have our mastermind days it's so full-on isn't it it's so busy you don't really get a chance to talk to anyone not in a great detail and what I've loved about doing my in Instagram series is I've had so many people from the goal circle on here and get to find out what everyone does and that's what it's all about because we don't always know that so going forward you know that if you've got any clients that come to you that need deep dive therapy work then please do send them over to me <laughs> and likewise I can do the same with you so it's about collaboration right so um, it's it's all good but thank you so much for coming on I hope everyone's enjoyed it um, and I think we're seeing each other next week, actually, aren't we? I think we've got a mastermind. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you for coming on, darling. And I will put your link of on, when it goes on YouTube. I'll put as many information bits that they can find you on your website and all that anyway. So thank you again. Thank you for watching, everybody. And I'll see you next week with my next guest on my Become Unstoppable series. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.